fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'll silver! Pop Martin, the blind bootmaker of Bluefield, was busily engaged on a pair of fine leather boots when Doc Winder, the town's physician, and Marshal Storm dropped in. Oh, come in, Doc. Hello, Marshal. Howdy, Hello, Pop. Uh, pull up a chair and make yourself to home. Pop, you amaze me sometimes. <laughs> me too. Uh, how you mean I amaze you? Well, we walk in here and don't say a word, and right off you recognize both of us. I just don't see how you do it. <laughs> yeah, I know you the minute I heard your footsteps. You see, Doc, I always say I see through my ears. <laughs> see through your ears? Well, that's a mighty good way to put it, I reckon. Your eyes is blind, so you depend upon your ears to make up for being blind. It still amazes me. Now, Marshal, I've heard Pop Martin call the name of somebody when they walk in here, and he ain't even seen them in years. <laughs> Never forget a footstep once you hear it. Hmm, say, that's a mighty fine pair of boots you're working on. Who are they for? Yeah, they look something like the pair you just finished for your boy, Dusty. Must have paid a fancy price for them boots. Yes, sir, they're fine boots, sure enough. <laughs> You'd really like to know who these boots has been made for, would you? Well, nobody around town could afford them. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Can you keep a secret? I reckon I can. How about you, Marshal Storm? In my business, you've got to learn to keep a secret. Well, I'll tell you. All right. But don't say nothing about it. You see, he might be dropping in here most any time to get him. I don't want nobody around when he does. Who are you talking about? These here boots I'm working on... There for the Lone what, Ranger. The, what's Lone that? Ranger. Yes, sirree, the Lone Ranger. Now, don't you tell anybody. Why, hmm. Pop, me and Doc never heard you say anything about knowing him. Uh, yes, sir, he stood right here, right in my own little shop, and got himself measured up for these here boots. Well, uh, how do you know it was a Lone Ranger? How I know? <laughs> because when he was standing here, my boy Dusty was standing right here beside him. That's how I know. Dusty? You mean he knows the Lone Ranger? The fact of the matter is, hmm. Dusty's riding with the Lone Ranger, and that engine the masked man has along with him all the time. Well, I'll be... Pop, if you hadn't told me yourself, I wouldn't believe it. But I know Dusty. He's a good boy. He wouldn't lie. If Dusty told you his friend was a Lone Ranger, then it's the Lone Ranger, all right. <laughs> Now, 
Tonto, the Indian companion of the Lone Ranger, had returned to their camp a short distance from the little town of Bluefield with a story that intrigued the masked man considerably. After me buy grub, Kimasabi, me go by boot shop, run by blind bootmaker. A blind bootmaker? Ah. Uh, me see pair of boots. Me want buy him, make gift to Dan. But bootmaker say him not sell him. I know Dan would appreciate a pair of boots from you, Tonto. Them very fine boots, and me know Dan like them. But bootmaker, him say no. Did he uh, give any reason? Ah. Him say him make boots for son. Keep him till the son comes back. His son must be about Dan's age, then, huh? No. Him say boy, 19 year old. Not so big. But Kimasabi, that not all him say. No? Well, what else, Toto? Bootmaker say son, good friend, a lone ranger. Say son ride with Lone Ranger all time. <laughs> oh, Dotto, the old fellow's probably spinning a yarn just to pass the time away. Not being able to see and working mostly with his hands, he has lots of time to think. Think of tales to entertain his customers. No, Kimasabi. Him have another pair of boots and not sell them. <laughs> yes? What did he tell you about the other pair, Tonto? They belong to the Lone Ranger himself? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what him say. What? That's what bootmakers say. Boots belong to Lone Ranger. How you know him say that, Kimasabi? I, I didn't know it. And I can't understand it. What else did he tell you about the boots? When, when him say that, me leave. Ride fast, tell you. I can't help but think the old fellow just spinning a yarn. But I'm going to find out why he's spinning it. Oh, what you do, Kimasabi? Tonight we ride back to Bluefield. The bootmaker is working in his shop by... Uh, I want to have a talk with him. Oh, oh, fella, oh, oh. <coughs> Hey, Bree. Hey. Here I am, Slim. What's up? Get your ears peeled back for what I got to tell you. It must be good the way you're all lathered up. Good enough. It's plenty bad what I got to tell you. Remember that kid, Dusty Martin? <laughs> You mean the kid that thought you was a Lone Ranger? Yeah, him. Well, he's out of prison. Did he bust out? No, he's pardoned. Pardoned? Well, he got five years. Hell of mine over in Centerville Prison got word out to me. How do you know who Dusty was? He was doing time under the name of Eddie Jones. When Dusty went up, I sent word to this pal of mine, wising him up. Told him to keep me posted on everything Dusty did. Well, Slim, what you figuring on doing about it? Breed, we gotta get him. And we gotta get him good before he talks. From what my pal says, Dusty's aiming to talk to somebody. Oh, it makes you think so. He did his time under the name of Jones. Nobody in this town knows about where he's been. You think he'd keep his mouth shut? My pal says that all the time Dusty was in prison, he wrote letters to his old man. You mean the blind bootmaker at Bluefield? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He thought you was a lone ranger, too. Recollect how he could tell it was you when you'd walk in his shop just by hearing your footsteps? Yeah, yeah, I recollect that. But as I was saying, the kid wrote the old man that he's still riding with a lone ranger. And that they's chasing me and you for that job we pulled. You mean the one where Dusty held the horses while me and you robbed the bank? Yeah, that's the one when the law nabbed him. Why, that's a job he got sent up for. <laughs> got five years. Yeah, that's what the judge gave him. Somebody got him out in six months. Who do you think? I don't know for sure. But I got an idea. Who? A lone ranger. What? That hombre's got a way of buttoning into things, even getting folks out of jail. Now, you listen to me, because we got to act fast. Yeah, I'm listening. I come through Bluefield today and browsed around some. You did? And Dusty ain't back yet. I found that out. When do you think he'll show up? I'm aiming to find that out tonight. I'm going in and find out what his pa knows. There's too many folks around this afternoon to talk to him. Gosh, you ain't going to do that. Dusty and me had tipped them off about you not being the Lone Ranger. Ah, no, he didn't and he won't. Dusty don't never want his old man to know he was doing time. And uh, I, I, I found out something else today. <laughs> I, I found yeah, out. Yeah, what was it? Well, you recollect that pair of boots that Dusty's paw was making for me when we had to get moving? Yeah, he was working on them at the time we pulled the bank job. <laughs> you were sore for a month about not getting them boots. Well, I'm going to get them tonight. And I may get Dusty at the same time. Well, sir, I knew you the minute I heard your footfalls on the boardwalk outside the shop. By the third step you took, the words popped right out of my mouth. Says I, that's him. Sure is remarkable how you blind folks see through your ears, Pop. Yep, it sure is. And I'm mighty glad to be here talking to you again. 
Just like before me and Dusty started trailing them bandits. Is uh, Dusty with you? Uh, no, he ain't. Fact is, I figured he might be here ahead of me. Oh, not yet he hasn't. Had a letter last week. Said he'd be dropping in most any day. Of course, I can't see to read his letters myself. Oh, yeah. yeah that's right, you can't. Uh, who reads them for you, Pop? Oh, sometimes Doc Winder, sometimes Marshal Storm. Mostly Marshal Storm. Marshal, huh? Yeah. You see, he's known Dusty since Dusty was knee-high to a frog. Reckon that's why Dusty always aimed to be a lawman. He thought so much of Marshal Storm. Uh-huh. How come Dusty didn't come in with you? Well, me and him figured we better split up before we got here. Me being the Lone Ranger, I gotta be careful. And I wouldn't want to have Dusty run to no risk by being with me. In case somebody might be laying for me. Yes, that's smart and mighty considerate. There's plenty of people who'd like nothing better than taking a pot shot at the Lone Ranger. Hey. There's a pretty pair of boots setting up there on that rack, Pop. You think so? Yes, sir. Them's real handsome. Looks like they'd be just about my size. Yeah, put them on and see. Might as well. Yes, sir. Them's mighty fine boots. How to get these old boots off my feet? I'll bet a dime they fit you perfectly. Yeah. Well, Pop, you win on the first one. Couldn't feel any better. The other will fit just as snug. Yeah, just a minute now. <laughs> Snug's a word for it, Pop. There they are, and fit's a fiddle. Right. Now let's see you walk in them. Yeah. yeah, feel fine. Kind of squeaky, though. A little grease will fix that up. Do you like them, eh? Sure do. Well, they're yours. Been keeping them for you. Ah, you don't say. Well... Well, now, that's mighty nice of you. Well, don't you recollect? I fitted you and Dusty for new boots just before you had to go chasing Slim Landman and that fella he runs with. Well, now, I plumb forgot about that. I sure did. Uh, that must be Dusty's pair setting up there. That's right. Them two pair of boots been setting up there together just waiting till you and Dusty come back. Could have sold them 50 times, I reckon. Yeah, I bet you could at that. Oh, somebody coming in. Yeah. Can't make out who it is. I better get out of sight. You know, I can't take any chances counting this mask I got on. That door over there goes into a woodshed. Yeah, I'll hide in there. <laughs> hey, come in, sir. Thank you. You work late, don't you? Well, it ain't work when you like what you're doing, and I do. What can I do for you? I want to look at a pair of boots. And what size? I'd uh, like to look at those boots on the rack there next to you. No, they ain't for sale. No? No, they ain't. Anyway, they wouldn't fit you. You're too big. <laughs> That's a pretty good guess. Well, ain't much guesswork to it. I knowed when you walked in, you're a heavy fella. Go by me hearing. I believe you had another pair of boots. Uh... What say? You had another pair of boots, I believe, which were not for sale. Yeah, I did have. They were here late this afternoon. Who are you, mister? I didn't recognize your footsteps when he came in. I could be a friend of uh, Dusty. What? I'll pick it up for you. Oh, it's just my all. Oh! The door is bolted. I'll have to break it down. Oh, 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 The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. While talking to the blind bootmaker in the latter's shop, the Lone Ranger is fired upon by a hidden gunman. The bullet intended for the masked man struck the bootmaker instead. Instructing Tonto to get a doctor for the bootmaker and then report back to camp, the Lone Ranger raced after the mysterious gunman. Come on, Silver. Faster, boy, faster. Slowly, the great white stallion overcame the lead that the gunman's horse gained in the first getaway. We're gaining the color. Come on, Silver. Soon, the masked man could make out, even in the darkness, the form of a horse and rider racing with reckless speed toward a brightly burning campfire. Almost got him, Silver. Come on, big fella. Come on. As the fleeing gunman rode into the firelight, the masked rider of the plane saw another man jump up from the ground where he'd been sleeping. Headed for a fight, big fella. We'll ride them down. Bending low over the neck of the great white stallion, the Lone Ranger's nerveless hand swept downward to his gun. Like a hurricane, the Lone Ranger and Silver swept into the firelit camp, guns blazing. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Bluefield, Dusty Martin walked into the marshal's office to learn about the shooting of his father. But, Marshal Storm, don't you have any idea who shot Dad? Oh, no, not an idea in the world. Wasn't nobody around the place that time of night. Your pa ain't revived none, so he can't say who done it. You said something about an Indian getting Doc Winder over to the shop. Yeah, that's right. Some engine did ride over and get Doc out of bed. Rode him over to your pa's shop on his horse and then disappeared in the night. Must have been passing and heard the shooting. Yeah, must have. Marshal Storm, did Dad ever find out? About you doing time? Yes. Oh, he never found out. Nobody else knows anything about it either. That is, except me and Doc Winder. And he still thinks that I've been riding with a lone ranger. Me and Doc never told him no different. Of course, you know how your pa talks. You mean he told people about yep. me? He's always telling folks what you're doing. And they... Well, I reckon none of them believed it. Well, it wasn't true. But at first, I, I thought I really was riding with the mask. Yeah, that no-good sidewinder Slim Landman and that partner of his sure put one over on you, Dusty. Then when I went to jail, I, I just had to keep up what I'd started. I had to have some reason for staying away. I understand. Me and Doc both understand. When we went to the governor and told him, he understood too. I'll never be able to repay you and Doc for what you've done for me. Oh, wait. Somebody's coming in the front way. Probably Doc Winder. <laughs> Dusty. Hello, Doc. Marsha just told me the bad news. I, I just got in. Come in, Doc. Mm. I'm mighty glad you showed up, Dusty. How is he? Mighty low. He come to just a little while ago, though. Could you talk to him? Yeah, he talked just as rational as could be, too. Did he give you any idea who done it, Doc? Well, he told me a mighty strange story. And if I didn't know Doc, uh, uh, Pop Martin, I'd have sworn he was out of his head. Well, what'd he say? Well, you remember those two pair of boots he made? You mean the pair for Dusty and the pair for the Lone Ranger? Yeah, they're the ones. He started making them when, when I thought Slim Lanvin was the masked man. I remember him. Well, earlier tonight, according to your pa, the Lone Ranger came in to get his pair. The Lone Ranger? Lone Ranger? Well, that's what Pop said. What? That was Slim Lanvin. Dad had known by his footsteps, his voice. That's just who it was. Yes, sir, Doc. Dusty's pa knew Lanvin as a Lone Ranger. That's right, he did. I didn't think of that. Anyway, just after Landvin put on the boots, they heard somebody else coming. Somebody else? Yeah, somebody else. Landvin went and hid in the woodshed. Your pa, thinking all the time he was the Lone Ranger and wouldn't want to be seen. How about the other fella? Well, Pop says he'd come in and started asking questions about them same boots. What boots? The boots that Landvin had just put on, the ones your pa had made for him, thinking he was the Lone Ranger. I'll be doggone. So, Pop asked him who he was, and Dusty, you know what he said? What'd he say? He told you, Pa, he might be a friend of yours. A friend of mine? Why? Uh, just about that time, your Pa says the shooting started and he was hit. He don't recollect no more. Uh, I wonder who the hombre was. Well, Pop said he judged from his walk that he was a big fella. Anyway, Pop said he was the one that shot him. I wonder who he... I don't draw, Marshal. But, a mask man! Uh, came in the back door. Who are you? What do you want? I've been standing in this back hall. I've heard every word. You're the sidewinder who shot my dad. You'll not get away with this, I warn you. Marshal, does this mean anything to you? Hmm? What? A silver bullet? Why, you're a lone range. Well, I'll be... Now, that's not important. Dusty, I'm the man your father thinks shot him tonight. You? You were the man who went in the shop and... 
who claim to be my friend? Yes, and I'll prove I am your friend. Otto. Uh, Chano. Why, that's the name of the engine. Men. Uh. Dusty. There's a man who shot your father. Slim Land. Well, well, why you? He's wearing them boots that Pop Martin made. I'll kill him. Oh, Dusty. They'll all take care of Landman. But he told me he was the Lone Ranger. It was because of him I was sent to prison. Landman shot my dad. Yes, I know. Landman never did a decent thing in his life. Tonight, Landman's going to settle for some of the things he's done. What you going to do with me? Don't let him hang me. No, you won't be hanged tonight, Landman. You're going to do a bit of acting. You won't like it, Landman. But remember, yeah? while you're acting, there'll be a gun sunk to the cylinder in that scrawny back of yours. And if you don't say the right thing at the right time, I've got a nervous trigger finger. Come on. Wonder what's going on? I don't know. Me and a couple of other fellows is in there sitting up with Pop when Doc and Dusty come in and run the whole lot of us out. About the same time, the marshal and three other fellows come up and slipped into the woodshed. They did? Who was they? I don't know. One was an Indian, another was a big fellow with a mask on. With a mask on? Yeah, wearing a mask. And the masked man had a big gun stuck smack in the back of a third fella. And was that third fella scared? He must have been the hombre that shot Pop. They'll probably take it a minute to let Pop identify him. Well, if they are, they better hurry. Poor Pop was sinking when Doc come in and run us out. How you feeling, Pop? I'm sinking, Doc. I know I'm sinking. There, there, now. I wouldn't mind going if... Only Dusty had come. You really want to see Dusty, don't you? I want to see Dusty more than anything. Even more than living. Pop, listen. Huh? Ever hear them footsteps before? Dusty. It's Dusty. Dad. Dad. Oh, Dusty, <laughs> my boy. Dad. Dusty. Oh. Doc. Yes, Pop? I'm... I'm ready to go now. No, you ain't ready yet, Pop. Dusty brought a friend. A good friend. A friend? Yeah. A good friend. Whose steps you make them out to be, Pop? Dad. Make them out, Pop? A good friend. The best friend Dusty ever had. The Lone Ranger. Dad. <laughs> You want to shake Pop's hand before he goes, don't you, Lone Ranger? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I, uh... I want to shake your hand, Pop, before you go. Watch after Dusty when I'm gone. Won't you, Lone Ranger? Yeah. Yeah, I'll watch after him. And promise me... What you want the Lone Ranger to promise, Pop? Can you speak up? Promise me... Before I go, you'll get the man what shot me. Can you hear them footsteps, Pop? That's him. That's him. Who is it, Pop? Tell us who it is. That's the man who shot me. So, so the Lone Ranger captured him. Dad, Dad. <laughs> yes, Pop. The Lone Ranger got the dirty critter who gunned you. In the face of my maker, Pop, I ain't lying. <laughs> yeah. I can go now. He's gone. Dad. Get Landman out of here, Marshal. Come on, Slim. <laughs> You've done your act. But your next one's going to be a lot tougher. Come on, young boy. Dusty. Why did you do it? He died thinking you're the man who shot him. Why did you do it? Dusty, it's not important that your dad should have known who actually shot him. See, Dusty, your dad believed in an ideal. He hated Landman the killer just as decent people hate all killers. But to his unseeing eyes, Slim Landman was another man. A man you yourself had created. I know. Oh, uh... I... Wish I could forget. So you see, Dusty. 
Your dad, first and last, believed in you. But I could have explained to him. It wasn't right for you to take the blame. No, it was too late, Dusty. But it's a sacrifice I, I'll never forget. Sacrifice? Dusty, the man Lanvin shot at tonight, was me, not your father. What I did just now, well, it was the least I could do to repay the sacrifice he made for me. Slim Landman, the gunslinger who shot Pop Martin. That's what I heard the marshal say. And the marshal says Slim's partner was being brung in by the deputies. Both of them was nabbed by that big masked hombre who just walked out of the shop with Dusty Martin. Yes, sir, he... And he had his arm around Dusty. Sort of consoling him like. I wonder who that masked fellow is. I thought he's a bandit when I first seen him. Bandit, bandit, nothing. Well, the marshal told me who he is. Only he said for me to wait till he gets out of the crowd before I said anything. Uh, well, I don't see him. Who is he? Who is he? Well, he's the Lone Ranger. Oh, the Lone Ranger. I'm Silver you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Yeah.